Hello there, welcome to Nerdist Book Club. We are live on Nerdist and Geek and Sundry's YouTube channel. Hi there, I'm Maud Garrett and joining me, you know these beautiful faces. We've got the longtime Alpha Book Club turned Nerdist Book Club co-hosts Hector Navarro, who is our resident comic book fanatic, and also Rachel Sly, who loves her gothic mystery thriller. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Totally. Um, and we all have our sort of niches where we are comfortable. So we are super excited to have a book where we are completely outside of our comfort zone, talking about literature in a brand new way and themes that we may not be necessarily um, uh, inundated with in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, but we just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. We know that everyone's, well, some people, if you are at home, it's been a long time that you've been at home and there is some serious monotony happening for some of us. So I think it's fantastic that we're all taking the time to read a book and to uh, chat about it. And the book club uh, is the best book club out there in terms of community because these are amazing people. So Rachel, Hector, I want to check in with you guys. How are you feeling about the book now so far this portion? Good. Hector. It's getting easier. Like we said last week, this portion as well was a little bit, look, as soon as Marlon James was like, now here's a bunch of action. I went, oh, okay, <laughs> this yeah. is just like everything else uh, that, it, that, that has action and has you know, drama and stuff. So what I mean by that is, is that this section was a little bit more, I mean, the more we read of this book, we're now 500 pages in, we've only got a hundred to go, <laughs> something like a hundred to go. I think I have a pretty good grasp on the, the rhythm, the language, the world itself, the settings, the characters. I've been paying more attention to the maps when I read this section, when we get, whenever we get to a section with a map, I'm like, let me really look at this. So I just feel overall, I am understanding it more and I'm just kind of settling into the world more. And I'm very interested to see how it's all going to end because some sort of ideas that I had didn't pan out, but some other ones that I did, I'm like, I think this still might be the thing, what's happening. So yes. it is interesting, it's interesting. Rachel? Uh, yeah, I really loved this section because uh, it's super intense and you also, I, the action was really cool, but I really liked um, getting a lot more sort of um, backstory and character motivations and these secret plots and what, how everything ties together and maybe my new favorite character. Um, uh No, I do love, I do love uh, him. No, the, um, oh God, where's my list of names because there's so many people there are a lot. um uh lissy solo ah lissy solo who mm. i, would I love her i think time. she's so friggin cool and um also sogalon yep. haven't been listening to it i've been reading it sogalon sogalon um mm -hmm. also i find fascinating and her story and how that's unfolding i think just both of those characters really grabbed me and the fact that Sogolon and Tracker are sort of like opposite. Yeah, they, they, they mirror each other and conf you know, conflict with each other very strongly. Um, and also I just wanna say, I know we don't know for sure yet, but remember when I said that the boy was maybe doing some stuff? Uh-huh, yep. I still think Thought about you, thought about you in that section. I don't trust that little boy one bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm really digging it. What about you, Maude? Yeah. Um, I think, I remember when Michael B. Jordan bought the rights to this book and we were like, what is this going to look like? Right. This portion of the book, I could visualize what it would look like in a series or on screen. Yeah. And right. that was really fulfilling for me to be able to kind of like see it in that scope. Um, Sogolon, I don't trust, and I'm desperate to know why, why she's keeping these secrets, what she has to hide. Um, I'm, you know, still really hasn't, ha I personally haven't really forgiven her for her monumental fuck up of like giving the, the boy to someone who just sold him on. Like, and I love that Tracker won't let that go either. Um, I'm liking that Tracker is becoming more humanized. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is Mossy bringing that yep. side of him out. And I yep. love that dynamic. And I was um, kind of saying that my favorite characters are uh, Sad Ogo because he embodies oh, love him. empathy and repercussion and sort of mm -hmm. like consequence and 
just like such an empathetic character that I want to protect at all costs, but also Mossy. And Mossy um, does a really great job of the way that he kind of communicates. It's like that boy went to therapy. Like, you know, he's able to yes. intuitively dissect. Intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. And that side's been really lovely. And also having a counter kind of like a com- competition in a way with Leopard. Uh, yeah. And I've, I've been really enjoying those moments as well. And I feel that Mossy brings out the best in Tracker because previously I have not liked him yeah. at all. So yeah. that yeah. this is really interesting, but the action sequences are a lot of fun. Um, there are moments, you know, when the library's burning down and then when they're leaving and you catch your breath and you're like, what? No, now it's like this army that's being controlled. And it's, that was a lot of fun. So I'm really desperate to kind of like get in and dissect these things because you're exactly right. The story is moving. Uh, it's finally kind of like coming together a little bit more for me. The pieces mm-hmm. of the puzzle are there, even though new characters are being added, new storylines are being added. We're going to different locations. There's always a lot. You can't sit with anything for a, a amount of time. And there are times that when it, if it happens a little bit, you're thrust back into the story again. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In the first section of this particular book, it was all the backstory and world building. In the second portion of the book, we got details of the quest kind of finally uh and now a bunch of people um are hired to find a missing child who is described as the last son of an elder who was murdered for speaking out against the king of the north kingdom the nah. boy is- Hector. <laughs> apparently the boy not is- somebody apparently makes not. a gift of that um yeah i <laughs> more let's talk more about that because i'm a little bit confused about this portion so i need a little bit of help with this yeah i mean i'm confused about every portion mod but the <laughs> important thing is is that you can't really trust anybody in anything yeah. that's said by a character i think that both of you were very spot on in talking about this book in the early weeks with two things number one the character of tracker being somebody who was so affected by trauma. I honestly, I mean, we were talking about it and we we're having great conversations, but as I was reading the text, I'm like, I don't know if that's in the text or if that's us bringing our knowledge of how people sure. work to a character that might not be a normal people in a normal world. But mm-hmm. I appreciated the conversation. And then we get to this section and I think you two were especially right. Masi is calling out, just like um, in the comments, uh, uh, Avery Adventurous said, I love that everyone started calling Tracker out on his misogyny. Yes. That happened the second that the or the second thing that i think is um that you guys were spot on with was like the book being so much about um who gets to tell the story and what their point of view is versus is that reliable can we rely on that can we believe that to be fact or true and so it's very twisty turny the answer is apparently never it's very (laughs) it's very twisty turny and um yeah you summing that up i mean we learned that that's not who the boy was, the true target of the murders was the child the whole time and the boy is not the elder son. So then we're left with questions at the end of the last section. Who is he? Why are so many people after him? And even after reading long sections where people are kind of breaking it down, I'm still like, mm, okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm still not <laughs> sure what is real and what's not and who to trust. Yeah. And um, it's, it, it's, it's been like this with me from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I read a section, we get together, we look at our sort of breakdown of it or I see other people's breakdown of it and I go, oh, okay, okay, right, that's what happened. And when I'm done with this book by next week, the same thing's gonna happen. I'm gonna finish it, I'm gonna close the book and go, okay, what was it that sort of happened in the synopsis and the plot of this version of the story? And um, that I'm looking forward to too. It always just Mm -hmm. provides more clarity. Yeah, I think everyone is an unreliable narrator and especially knowing that this is a trilogy that's going to be from other characters' perspectives. I believe I read that Sogolon is the one yeah. for book two. So that was really- And then it's the boy and the knight or something? Mm. Is the third book? The boy, yeah, I don't, but the knowing that in this section and not only kind of getting the true backstory of the boy which someone in the comments was saying um, that, who was it? A clever girl, this is the first time I could really visualize this as a series or movie, and I could see why someone might try to relate it to Game of Thrones. Sure. Totally agree. There's this, you know, prince who was promised, kind of, who no one knows about, um, and the, you know, the Spider King just sort of learning. I loved learning the backstory that, the king 
um, as he stands, who we get to know more about him. He's cruel, he's jealous, um, but he- Masara? Yes. And I've just been keeping notes of Spider King because I really like that. I like the visual. And then also- I can feel like this golden King. armor that wraps around yeah, him. Yeah, it's like and a- And it just exposes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of like insect, bird, scary creatures, which I would be super excited to see. I think it should be a show. I agree with you, mm-hmm. Hector, especially yeah. now that we've gotten here. I think there's so much character development, but basically that the um, the, li- the line of succession was, you know, generations ago uh, disrupted when a king kind of murdered his sister and her family who were supposed to be the next in line. And it keeps happening. And all of these sisters of these kings are being sent off to the convent to kind of keep them from having any heirs. Um, but it also cursed the family. So there are all these princes who go mad. So there's also the sort of Joffrey angle there, you know, a mad king of any kind. Mm -hmm. But then knowing that um, uh, Lissy Solo is just better than her brother in every way, fighting, she gets a lot, the dad is like, maybe she should rule, like, she's pretty cool. And- You're like my son, you're like a son I never had. Yeah, and she's like, ugh. Especially for any kind of, I mean, in Game of Thrones, obviously, Arya, Brienne, there are all sorts of parallels, but it reminded me a little bit of uh, the Alana series, which is a young adult series about uh, a young girl who, um, it's great, Tamora Pierce, um, uh, a young girl who, girls can only be mages, she has a brother, her brother wants to be a mage and not a knight, so she cuts off all her hair and pretends to be a boy and goes to train as a knight, and um, so yeah, I, I really loved that character, and also that there's this mystery behind the boy. He's with these monsters and everyone, whether it's not a prophecy, but everyone, like we've said in, with Dune and any sort of story like this, the it doesn't really matter if it's a prophecy because everyone's actions kind of, if you believe in it, you're gonna act as though that's the case. And so I love this idea that he, you know, everyone is kind of vying for power and the AEC, is kind of trying to use the king um, to his own devices. And Lisi Solo is like, well, I have this son. I should be able to take my throne back, not necessarily in a power hungry way, but what if Jon Snow, I saw this on Reddit. I can't take credit for it, but it not Jon Snow, Ramsey. Exactly. To say. Yeah. Yeah. What if Jon Snow was Ramsey? So what if you have like two twisted kings vying for power and your tracker or Sogolon trying to figure out what your place in that is. I just find that super, way more interesting and kind of flipping the narrative of the chosen one and the bad guy. And it's like, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. they're all bad. <laughs> and as soon as the trope starts feeling familiar, whoosh, it does a 180. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, okay, never mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to rescind an opinion. And that was, I didn't initially see the comparisons of it being an yeah. African Game of Thrones. Uh, now that the the whole dynasty is coming into play here, I'm like, okay, this is literally a Game of Thrones now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I'm starting to see that, which it took us half uh, three quarters of a book. Yep. Um, but now I get it. Um, and I noticed that, like, going back to your comments about sort of like the insects and the uh, little birds and things like that. That vampires is such a courtly kind of thing especially going with game of thrones where you have varus who is the uh, master of spies and it was always his little spiders and his little birdies Mm -hmm. and like all these critters that would um be spying on everyone and delivering information because information is knowledge and knowledge is power and we're seeing Mm -hmm. that with um when we go further on down the book which we'll get to but the queen's uh city how there were no visible there were no children and then all of a sudden you're like oh, <laughs> oh no they're harvesting them oh. that was the other thing where it was like this is game of thrones on crack like yeah. this is so much yeah. worse than paying yeah. kids to stab someone like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty grim that whole section oh was pretty God. grim I it because was so interesting i i did too i mean i i, I was let's, like stop breaking me from the inside i want to yeah. skip to that and talk about that right now they get to this city yeah. they get to a city that i feel like marlon james 
is relying on your, and again, I don't know who this book is for other than just the world, but I'm looking at it through a lens of like a Western American reader, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yep. like they taking this on. And I feel like Marlon James is relying on the fact that, that that person, us, we, that reader thinks of Africa in a certain way and thinks of like modern Western cities a certain way. And so he kept describing how these characters were so blown away by the tallness of the city. And as I was reading it, I was like, this is so interesting. Is this like the first time in this world that there is this level of like industrialization or technology or, you know, mechanical, whatever, whatever. And there All were moments that- and trees. And, and so they, they, they described it, like, it. It was like the moon of Endor meets Wakanda. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Plus a little Star Trek in there because- the, you know, Tracker's talking about how the doors would whoosh open and he was kind of looking around like, how did that happen? And then he would walk into a room. And so, and you know, like things would be like phew, coming out on a little tray, almost like it's a replicator or some Star Trek, you know, beep, boop, boop, boom, yeah. like it's a Jetsons house. Yeah. And I think that it felt to me like Marlon James in that section was, was messing with us and messing with me knowing, here's what you think you, you know, you know, like here's what the characters know. Here's what you can visualize, but I'm not going to, give it away yet. And then it, and, and it all came back to the reason that there is this level of advancement is that innocent people were being taken advantage of in a gruesome way. And I went, that's very interesting. <laughs> Marlon James is saying that about that. Very mm -hmm. interesting. And it was also so grim and so fucked up and so sad. Yeah. And then yeah. the kid who escaped from being in a room behind the walls this whole time, like so terrifying. Oh, like, boy. Just jumped off of a balcony. Yeah. Straight away, and like, that's the thing. Where it's like, if death is that sought after, as a, a you know, opposed to what life was, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. matrixy too with all the tubes yes. and sort of all well, that. I have to call out Miss um, Necromancer said the description of the city of Dolingo is very African Rivendell. The description is yeah. gorgeous, and it sucks you in with the advanced and lovely nature, yeah. where it would be easy to not see the rot inside. And yes. I that's so well put. And the other um, uh, Lord of the Rings uh, comparisons that I had was obviously with the Spider King and the Aes, mm. Aes, Aes, I'm not mm -hmm. Aes, 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 yeah. And that is with Wormtail, like the whispering and yeah. poisoning the king and literally as a parasite latching onto the position of power and um, making them think that their ruling were an actual fact, the second in command is running the yeah. ship. Right. I, I have to uh, read a comment out, which made me laugh out loud. So apologies for that, but maybe we could all appreciate it. Uh, and that is WJ Baggins saying, this book is like being beaten with a DVD box set of Zack Snyder movies. Grim, dark, misogyny, and some body horror on top. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. <laughs> it, it, it is, and I, but I also think that, oh God, don't come for me, Snyder fans, but um, <laughs> still, I'm tired. Um, but I think that there is, a lot more self-awareness in these characters and how they are portrayed as mis like I don't think it well actually there was a discussion in the comments about that yeah. where yeah. Um, I believe it was the Tamaranian was just like I was really I'm paraphrasing and I apologize and we'll chat about this in the after show but it was like <laughs> I'm kind of concerned about is the author misogynistic like mm. because Tracker keeps spewing forth so much misogyny. I don't think so at all. And then Ian was like, well, no, he's writing the character and mm -hmm. the character Tracker is misogynistic. And we learn more about that and Tracker getting regulated to his behavior and yep. like finding the root of that. And sort of like, again, Tracker being sort of Rivendell and him having some rot inside as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? yes, I think that's absolutely. a beautiful way to put it. I think it's a really tricky balance to do that is to write characters that have really um harmful points of view and to not let the book be that yes and i think to go back to that comparison of like it's grim dark it's hitting you over the head with it i feel like to rachel's point that the 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 that marlon james is very aware of how violent this is and i think it's very purposeful mm -hmm. and i think an argument could be made that if you look at Zack snyder's movie watchmen some people will read it and go nope that was also always very purposeful I see a lot of the action in that movie is like being there for, for action's sake, for being cool, 
and for being, you know, gritty and for having, for being bone breaking. And I feel like it, it tends to go a, a, a little bit away from that source material and how the source material treated violence. But it's tricky because you're going from a 2D non-moving story to one that is in motion. And this is sort of the same thing. If this were to be, if this were to be translated into live action, how would the, the, how would it all be shot? Would it be shot in a way where it's kind of glorifying it and cool? Or would it be like, this is messed up in the in, in terms of violence and in terms of, you know what I mean? So I think yeah, it's an I interesting it, conversation to have. Totally. And I think it could easily be both um, depending on the director, but I think there's so many like body horrors. So it, there's that like parasitic twin and oh. all of the- Oh, that scene. It was, I, it, there's I love so it. much, just, just everything so gross, but I'm just, like, thinking about what the design might look like under, you know, oh, some the blob a with director who's very stylized yeah. and sort of like a lot of vibrant colors. And um, I also think knowing that this is only one perspective and that Sogolon is next and knowing her backstory as this like 300 year old wind witch who's been just chasing revenge of all of the men who abused her. I was like, sign me up. Like she makes, she does not handle things well. And again, we only see one perspective. She's maybe, you know, she, she through her trauma is again, sort of the, the opposite side of the coin from Tracker where she's just like, I'm gonna, you know, use these men for my, uh, for my end game, I also and they're all evil and yeah. you know, fuck it. And yeah. I would love to see, knowing now how old she is, if the next book obviously tells some of this story, but gives you a lot of yeah. backstory before- We've had a you. lot of back flash, uh, flashbacks, back flashes. In, <laughs> in, in Australia, um, they're called back flashes. So we, oh, we get <laughs> so it, Mon, we get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Everything, it's, you know, the yeah. toilet goes to the opposite. Yeah, they're back flashes. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of flashbacks with Tracker, so I think that's exactly what will happen. Um, and I was reading in the comments, I completely agree with it, and that is that um, Marlon James is presenting misogyny so you can see it for what it is and have the discussion uh, exploring that, whereas having only like a misogynistic veil wow. over every part of writing, right. I have a feeling that when we do see it from Sogolon's perspective, there's not going to be misogyny there at all. And it's going to be almost uh, exploring the polar opposite side of it he is mm -hmm. women is weak and they can't fight back and therefore this is all of their fault and manipulative I they lie doesn't trust which it yeah all of that. and then you're gonna see well actually this is my perspective uh, my perspective because i've lived it and survived it and i think that that'll be a really great sort of like powerful dynamic and exploration that i am a little bit craving mm -hmm. after reading this portion no this whole i mean the whole thing I is yeah. But I'm learning about gay relationships and that's something that I, it is not my perspective and I don't know anything about. And so that's something that I'm able to learn from this book. And that's fantastic. It has a lot of it. Yeah. It, it, it has a, let's talk about uh, Mossy for a second because is it Mossy or Mossy? Audio Mossy. 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 Um, yeah. Ma like I know I, 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 the book tricked me and I think I tricked myself into being like, oh, the OTP in this story is Tracker and Leopard. They're yes. the ones that are supposed to be and then this section, I'm like, damn, dude, Masi's like the best He's guy. So good for him too. And they and made I... such sweet love, and it was also sweet. And I'm like, oh. this is great. And then when when Leopard showed up, I went, uh oh. No, 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 <laughs> so funny. No, he Leopard. finally had something good. Don't Leopard, you know, better... and of course, it's like and that's another here, show thing. Like, I feel like as soon as characters you like get together, the show is like, oops. Time uh -oh. jump or and Leopard's arrogance and like the way that he handled that. It was actually quite yeah. salacious to me reading that. I really kind of, I was like, oh shit, <laughs> what can I have it? Like, I really well, like And Mossy's like, I can tell him who I am. Like you can sense the he sort still of hasn't like, put his and, away. And, yeah, yeah. And, but also I think um, this section shows a uh, tracker, I think, you know, having consensual, loving sex maybe mm -hmm. for, without being manipulated or abused yeah. or things like their love feels like the healthiest so far he, and they challenge he, each other they and they have a in each other and they he, and they he both, said a section i want to quote because it stuck with me and i think it's very good writing he said 
when they were like hanging out below decks and just constantly going at it, Tracker said something like, we effed and then we made love and then we effed again. And then we like, just this very interesting- Dream of a relationship. I, I'm like, I'm like, that's a pretty good balance, bro. That sounds yeah, pretty good. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I, oh, someone in the comments, um, and the cartographer said, impeccable melodrama with Leopard showing up when he does. And I oh. totally agree. And I, I just like relished that. in it. Um, I, I also, actually forgot he was a character. Oh, I thought no. I was like, gonna have to be like, oh, no. that's right. Listen, I, was I never lucky. forgot because I'm reading a physical copy. So every time I pick it up to read, um, I'm reminded Black Leopard, Red Wolf. I'm reminded, I, you know, I go, I, I pick it up and have to remind myself, oh yeah, 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 that's him right there, that's Leopard. And that was, as I was reading it, it all of a sudden I had popcorn. I was like, oh my gosh, like yeah. it came out of nowhere because I was so, <laughs> it was such I was like, like a- Marlon James, I didn't know you had soap opera drama in you, but I am here for it. I yeah. love it. And I, I would love to really think on fan casting maybe next week um, for like a show, because just if we depend, mm. oh, obviously there's only one book and we don't know how it ends, but when I, I think about a, oh. a mm. trilogy from different perspectives, there, there's a couple of ways to go about it, I think. And I would be interested to see sort of um, starting with one, you know, maybe a season that's following Tracker and then you sort of just like, we're like record scratch. Yeah. Um, I also, I just really find the idea of like a 300 year old body snatching vengeful witch obviously is like super exciting to me mm -hmm. but what if it's written in a completely different style you know mm -hmm. like she's definitely not telling the truth and play and is very strategic and only tells them what's going on when she figures you know this might help me she's very um pragmatic uh and machiavellian which i think is another kind of theme in these book in this book that do the ends justify the means? Can, can you, you know, if you really believe this king is, or this princeling is going to be the one, and uh, I would be so interested to see if the writing, like his, because he's clearly such a like linguist and plays with language so much. I would look like, what if it's in a completely different style? You know, it's not yeah. within this framework. It doesn't have flashbacks. It even starts, yeah. Oh. Uh, factual and lacking of empathy, which is why the staccato was there because yeah, he's all weighing things. And it's matter of fact because he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't process anything. So he's like, so this bad thing happened to me and then this bad thing. I and, would love uh, that. That's exciting. Yeah. Here's yeah. another thing that's exciting if we're talking adaptation. Here's another similarity to Dune is the character Venon Jakwu, the little girl who was also just like a grown man inside of like and the yeah. way that that, yeah. that that Marlon James described her speaking was different the way that her rhythm when she but kind a lot of more went, frightening than Aaliyah yes oh absolutely oh 100%. absolutely so that that's something that again is the benefit of when you read a story in a novel a novel can write that and you will not lose any it's just part of the world okay you got it um it, it's 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 not something that you that you question. If you would see this in live action, you'll question it. When they hire a little girl actor, you know what I mean. You might question that sort of that rule of the world. But yeah. a thing that that adaptations will have on novels, and it was a very well written section. It was a great section. But just real quick, the the, the entire sections of action where characters were rolling around, flipping around, throwing knives at one another, jumping on backs, all this other stuff. I'm like, novels, no matter how well they're written. They, they can do this well, but they, I don't think they'll ever be able to do it better in my mind, in my mind's eye, than when you see it it performed in live action, you know? It, it's I mean, just, I it's just a different thing. <laughs> it, it's just a different thing. It's like, it, it, all that stuff was cool, but I was like, okay, now I can, I, 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 it was another instance of me seeing like, now I can understand how something like this could benefit from an adaptation, right? Up to this point, I'm like, this is great as it is, but, but looking it's at that section, Action. I think that's why for me when I'm reading it is so much more like plot and obviously the types of books I read like plot character a lot of character um sort of analysis that you can read into it and a twisty narrative like that's my sweet spot in a book but when we get to fight scenes like that I'm I'm 
trying, you know, I do have like ideas of what I think it all looks like, but it's, it's sort of like, I know that there's this, you know, winged creature and these things are all happening, but the way it's laid out is just like, mm, I, uh, and the narrator, he speaks faster and louder to kind of like build. Oh, really? I haven't been doing the audio book. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And then they moved to the left and then this happened and then that, and then it went to the, and it screeched. And I'm like, ah, ah, okay. <laughs> you have to, you have to be there. Otherwise, like, cause it happens yeah. really fast. Yeah. Um, I know we're going to wait for next week to fan cast, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to plant the seed to get people inspired. Yeah, because like, I just need to do a lot of research, honestly. Well, I incidentally have been placing faces and names and it kind of, like I picture in blur, I've realized only recently, like it's a Sorry. water painting or it's, yeah, it's not. I see a red triangle. Mm. Yeah, and I see the outline. I just was. see the outline and I didn't realize that. Even though I can picture things, I don't see if I shut my eyes. Is this when you shut your eyes, you can see it? Mm -hmm. It's right there. Damn. One. Triangle? Yeah. It's an outline that's fuzzy. It's like a, yeah, warped outline. And I was very frustrated <laughs> learning that. Um, but I have noticed that with um, Sogolon, uh, Sogolon, sorry. Sogolon is uh, Denai Guerrera in Walking oh. Dead when she plays Michonne. So oh. those, but I Great. see her as like almost more of a Medusa-esque, but those Great. dreadlocks, those long dreadlocks that she has. The wind, just like she's like, kind of, that kind of covering that the headband mm -hmm. that she has, but it kind of um, keeps that mis mystique, the mysteriousness kind of happening. But like mm -hmm. the hair tendrils, mm -hmm. I feel like plays like a strong role with with her magic. And then I think I said this before, Leopard has always been a bit of a uh, Winston Duke for me. Yeah, I just found out that I'm older than him. So yeah, so yeah, he's young. I don't like to think about those things. It's yeah. it's a bummer when it's supposed to be like late forties, yeah, and he's thirty three. Uh, yeah, it's a bummer when a hugely successful, like hunky, big dude actor is like, "I'm turning 30. I'm like, "Get out of here, man!" What? Yeah, I'm like, "I'm twenty two. Um, I have to read also as we're speaking about um, Sogolon, uh, my scary witch queen, Miss um, Necromancer again. Uh, in the next book, we'll find out if she actually died or if she's in a version of hell somehow. And that, because she oh, disappears in the yeah. flame, but like she's obviously a key character in this narrative. Yeah. And she could come back. She could come back for sure. Uh, but the idea of learning her like revenge saga yeah. and stealing bodies and torturing all these men and going mm -hmm. on all these quests and then getting her perspective on all of this. And then potentially where she ends up and how she might be there, like stuck with um, the warrior spirit that mm -hmm. pulled her in through the door. I just. Mm -hmm. It would be as though. I haven't even finished the first book and I'm like, yeah. Exactly. And Look, she's the last airbender. Like, let's not miss that. She's yeah. the last airbender with her powers. And I'm like. It would be like if the first Lord of the Rings book, The Fellowship of the Ring, was the entire Lord of the Rings story in one book. And then the second book is like, well, here's Gandalf's whole life. Like yeah. that's what this book series is shaping up to be, where you go, oh yeah. shit, so okay. Exciting <laughs> to me, I feel like in, yeah. in, in books and in TV, my favorite, I was tweeting about this last week, getting a like, and it doesn't have to be like a M. Night Shyamalan kind of twist, but like a character reveal um, was one that I had last week for a book I was listening to where you, it just makes you reassess everything so far. That's like my favorite feeling. That was why yeah. I loved Lost because I would come up with all these ideas and then you'd get a kernel and be like, okay, I have to do this all again. And Dark, I will say again, everyone should watch Dark. It is brilliant. Um, it does a thing like that. And being able to, now that I know the boy's history somewhat, or we at least have an idea of it and Sogolons and mm. we learn more about everyone, um, it just makes me re want to, you know, take a couple months off and then reread this maybe before the next book comes out. Um, yeah. Lord McFuzz just wrote a great comment, which has got me thinking that I'd like to pose with you guys. And that mm -hmm. is, where did the Inquisitor go? And I understand the storytelling is tracker relay. Yeah. I just, I you're forgot. exactly right, Lord McFuzz. Like, you get sucked into it. I didn't think about that at all it's it's full story mode now yeah mm -hmm. i love that yeah i i'm interested too because the when they're in delingo 
and he gets um, captured and you find out that this queen horribly is just either killing people when they come like travelers or using them to breed children oh. that they put up in this tree and the whole court watches and Sogolon watches mm -hmm. and mostly was just understandably traumatized and horrified and, really and of course and publicly ridiculed uh, I mean right and uh, yeah. then you I, I'm also yeah. fascinated by the children being raised in this nursery I felt like maybe they grow really quickly there or something and then they emerge it felt very much like uh, no one here probably hopefully someone in the chat has seen Zargos I really want to do a just like solo watch along on Twitter of it. It's super weird, but it has this like kind of like the Clone Wars as well with Star Wars. Similar, yeah, exactly. It just this speeding up. But what was really interesting was the parasite that like went up his nose and into his brain. Animorphs, anyone? Animorphs. Um, oh, we should read that next. <laughs> yeah, we could do like three books of an episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but the fact that he, that is like burning through his memories and he's trying to kind of put up stuff, uh, about the Mingi children that he cares about. And it's literally like tearing through his memory and he kind of is this bloody mess. And I was like, does he even know that he's an unreliable, like he's playing around with the Inquisitor and other people, mm -hmm. but he also, his memory has been completely messed with by oh, this creature. Think about it like so that. So maybe he's, you know. The more, affected, yeah, which is sort of a trauma thing too. If you go through stuff, and if you yeah. think about it enough, or put it away, or different ways that you, you know, cope with that kind of thing, it does become very. It can become very distant to you, and I think that's why he's so matter of fact because it sort of doesn't mm. even feel like it happened it to him. Mm. Like it's just a yeah. thing. This is just like uh, it sounds like you're describing the scene in Rogue One a Star Wars story where Boar Gullet got to Riz Ahmed and then like messed up Riz Ahmed's yeah. character for the rest of the movie where he was kind of like a little not there because mm -hmm. of, you know, Boar Gullet learning the truth, but then also messing him up. Yeah. That was a weird reference. Yeah. Okay. Boar Gullet. No, 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 totally. <laughs> that makes absolute sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that scene. So um, a really amazing thing about that particular uh, chapter in the book, um, I was, I've been listening to some podcasts and doing research on Marlon James and he is a, lecturer at a university about creative writing mm -hmm. and he said in this particular moment well I'm, I'm assuming it is but he said I would break my own rules I would be teaching things saying like do not yeah. have incredibly long sentences and then of course yeah. when I'm listening to the thing the events unfold where he's like going through all the memories the poor narrator I'm like this bastard can't breathe <laughs> like, yeah. he's like pass out. <laughs> because it was like sentence after sentence after sentence mm -hmm. where there were no full stops and again like when these moments happened there was a crescendo in um the narration where he spoke louder and faster and there were no sentence like there was no sentence yeah. structure at all it was just a flurry of information yeah. so i thought that was really interesting that he knows that this is structurally wrong I think I think, I'm glad you brought that up, Maude. I feel like this book, the whole thing is a, a experience for me where I'm reading an author who is so confident and aware of his skill. Yes. Now, sometimes what Marlon James writes doesn't necessarily connect to me. Sometimes it doesn't work for me. Sometimes it does in a big way work for me, but it's still clear that I'm watching like somebody who's a really, really, really good writer just flex and just do it. And I feel like he's even breaking rules while yeah. reading it. And I don't even know what the rules are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it just, it feels like a writer just being so confident in their art form that it's like I'm watching Speed Racer at the end of the movie Speed Racer and he's just making a race into art. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what's happening. Okay, crazy. Well, when yeah. you're I will say, can I uh, just talk about his writing and his strengths? Dialogue, the way that he kind of like, um, uses almost like ancient dialogue because this is sort of fantasy, yeah. Um, which is matter of fact and very sort of like logical um, mm -hmm. breakdowns of communication. But humor behind that, mm -hmm. like it's so clever. Yes. And he's really funny. Like I laughed out loud in portions reading, uh, listening to this book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, and it's still so messed up. And I think he's, I mean, because he's a professor 
And from the get go, you understand that like he understands language, he understands syntax yeah. and how to make, and the reason that you're feeling that when you're reading it or listening to it is because it is a rhythm, but he's breaking it. It's almost like jazz. Like as soon as yes. you know music, then you can break it. If you if yeah. you don't really understand the structure of it and what yeah. is the rules, thing, yeah, and you can just feel it that this could be written in a you know normal narrative structural way, but because he understands that, he can play with it and you know, all of those long sentences and the, you know, the normal syntax you're used to of a short, a long, and you know, different, yeah, right different medium, like an article has its own rhythm, uh, not, you know, right. novels have their own. And it, it reminds me of some of like the modernist writers like Faulkner or um, uh, just this almost stream of consciousness Yes, that's exactly. But with staccato moments that break yeah. that up and kind of jar you out of that stream of consciousness. Ian commented exactly that. It's, it's fascinating to me. It reminds me of uh, The Sound and the Fury, which I feel like I brought up one of the other times because it's, it's Faulkner and it's from, you know, four different, I think four, it's been a while since I read it, but um, Kit, brothers and sisters perspective, and each one is so stylistically different and uh, the first chapter starts with a character who does not have all of his mental faculties and jumps around in time. And Faulkner wanted to publish that chapter with different color ink to denote Whoa. where the different time Love it. were, but couldn't afford it and was like, mm, and published it anyway. And so it's very confusing when you start it. But then another brother, it's just complete stream of consciousness, like someone's inner monologue and I, I, that's why I think the next book is going to have a totally different writing style because it's, he also, gets it, you know? That is completely true to talking and hosting styles and how you use your voice to articulate words. Yeah. I mean, um, a great example is, you know, if you're presenting news, you all of a sudden have a particular way to talk about the news. And then if someone's just doing their stream of consciousness, that's your podcast. If someone's mm -hmm. going to have high energy and da 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 and it's like landing those beats using voice, but that's exactly what he's doing with words. But I feel like there are infinite ways that you can kind of like um, vocalize a sentence, but there's a limited, more of a limited way where you can write that. Mm -hmm. And I love that Marlon James is just reimagining what it is to put words on paper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I respect the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to start talking about chapter 15? Um, and kind of like go through the story a little bit because Stephen uh -huh. had an awful lot of research and put it together. So that's I wanna... true. I can do some re refreshers. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Hey, we, I'm not going to do a previous. Don't walk me. I'm not. I'm. I'm I I'm, meant I'm, that. Me too. <laughs> I'm right next to you. I'm right next to you. I'm your little kid brother, being like, yeah, thanks, Stephen. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. one who repeats what you say because you're my that's... tall older sister. I know we're both your. If I have to separate you two. <laughs> um, so chapter 15, track of researchers, the researchers, the guru at the local Congo public library. I love the fact that we got a library because we've been so nomadic the entire time. It's been very sort of like dust and tense. Yeah. Uh, this for me was like, yes. Um, he does find the manifesto that the Manguru was supposedly targeted over. However, it paints the current North King Royal line as corrupt and needing to go back to its roots of succession which stopped six generations back. Mossy arrives on his own quest for answers and they discover a hidden message in the glyphs. Love that. Again, Me I'm too. talking about the <laughs> like, glyphs, where she gets message. black paper, pulls out the purple, uh, the you know, purple light, mm -hmm. all that kind of hidden messages. Oh, it's a yep. scroll with no words. Put it over flame. Yes. Yep. Uh, this is again like the more detective uh, uncovering sort of mystery. Yep. Fucking subscribe. Love it. So um it warns of the winged god Butcher, the Aesi, Aesi uh, another plea to return the nation to uh, crowning the new king from the king's sister's son, uh, the better line. The current king's sister has no children, has been living in a co uh, convent, which definitely gives Tracker a hunch as the identity of the boy that they're seeking. But they're attacked again by these mind-controlled, zombified members of Congo's, uh, Congo's army, as well as Mossy's fellow prefects, 
I, this is when it becomes movie magic where you're just Mm -hmm. like, I can see this. This is amazing. I understand how it unfolds. And then you instantly have an ally in Mossy joining the party because the people who he trusted are trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Love it. The library Um, burns down. Super symbolic if you break it down. This is like their archives. This is the retaining of history. They no longer have history. There's unreliable unreliable facts and in the chat everyone and I felt this way I I know you guys did too everyone was saying um uh uh WJ Baggins said what did the destruction of the library just killed me reading Dodo Kiwi said the library was the first moment where we get completely reliable information and then it's destroyed and you're like yeah um and uh (laughs) Shire Agnew said I actually said no not the library which Mm -hmm. I totally yeah. No. it's just the set you're just it's well previously like the only sustainable kind of like uh evidence and leads that they have in this mystery are writs or it's you know yeah uh, you know factual paper little snippets mm-hmm. of code and glyphs and yeah. yeah but let's be real let's be real the three of us and our audience are the type of people that we could watch a really horrifying movie or a movie with like a really scary scenario but as soon as Beast shows Belle a huge library, we're like, oh, it wouldn't be that bad. The first thing we think is, oh, okay, I'd just be there. It's not so bad. Oh, I because could survive in this place. Basically, a level team. of respect that you have for someone that collects and shows yep. literature. Yeah. Yep. Like, I, I, I basically. Stories uh, is. I think I've even shown you it. And stories and characters. And I mean, that's why we you know, we love this and have some, and literally just text and when we're do, not doing it. Do you guys, like, do you guys want to see something cool? I'm in the garage right now. Do you want to see something cool? Yeah, yeah, man. This is a very much a work in progress. Uh, my plan is to basically at this point, I'm trying to build myself up to be like beast. And then I want to show my girlfriend, Abby, all of these books, except they're just comic books. So it won't have the same effect, but none of my, none of my comic you books are in here. have a sliding ladder. Oh, that's not a bad idea, actually. No joke. You're joking. That's not a bad idea. I'm about to show you something. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. That's the dream. (laughs) We're in the garage and we've been working. We hired a contractor and we've been working on building these custom bookshelves and they're finished, but they're not, they need to be painted and finished, finished. But let me show them to you right now, because this is, this is the, this is the future of Hector's life right here. Hold on. Rachel, are you in a position to take this? Because I don't know if I am. (laughs) Oh my God. That actually legit looks like my... Is that is that a hole in the middle? What is that for? A TV? That's, That's for action figures, Mod. That's where the action <laughs> figures are going to go. You're talking to Hector. TV? No, no, no. Not in this room. That's where, this That's is a sacred space. Action figure playset's going to go, and I'm going to put the Iron Giant, and I'm going to do this other stuff. So, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I, I love it, and I also, you know that Mod and I have definitely at a Comic-Con party or two just been like... Oh, Hector and Abby. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that time we were dancing on the dance floor. Oh. And we were dancing. And like no one else was that's there. That's like my couple's we, happy place. We, we, just like we looked over. Single. And I would love to be in love. <laughs> my two moms were looking at us like, oh, and, we're, and I was like, get out of here. Stop. Yep. <laughs> you guys are so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> They're in right. love. Great. Uh, but I will say, like, I grew up and my mom's priority has, because, like, her and I bond over books, has been a wall to see like floor to ceiling wall based bookshelf and the middle was cut out for the television but she color coded all the books in it and it was just my rainbow of life like i, I love it. it um but getting back to the story uh, <laughs> get through it. and if we don't we've got an after show to get through as well which will be fun and and we should if you do if for the chat and everyone we should um show our shelves and things like that uh on twitter hashtag nerdist book club because i would love yeah. to see I experimented with a new kind of way of displaying my books and I have a bunch that I haven't put up anywhere, but I just, um, yeah, I would love to see everyone's shelf. I have a, I have a work in progress shelf. I don't know if anybody else works this way, but I do this with my movies and my books is I'll have on the top, the books I've read every word, the books I've read page to page. I organize thematically. And then, and then after a certain Five. point, there's a bunch of books that I haven't read yet, but they're still like it out. They're still organized and alphabetized and everything like that. I, I like to have a section where I'm like, I've gotten to these and then I'm slowly adding to it as it's getting bigger and bigger, but yeah. Aesthetically, small, thin, small, fat, bigger, bigger. Mine are those, but also thematic. 
We'll show, we'll show our, we'll start okay, a thread. Okay. <laughs> we'll get ner Nerdist Twitter, aka Lee, our best friend. Um, we should start a, if you can, after the show, start a thread. And he we can kind of he share said, it. yes, please. So he, Lee's leaving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, Full confession, when there were the zombified mem members of uh, Congo's army fighting, for some reason, they were like, for me, uh, like sarcophagus kind of mummies, but with cool. like the pharaoh design mixed in with like lit kings from Dungeons and Dragons, but that's cool. my thing going on. Anyway, they run into the necromancer, ASC, who shows up and mind controls the crowd to attack them. That was the most badass baller moment so far. That was when I was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in. They are saved by Sogolon doing her wind wipeout. Um, and the girl Venin, along with the Buffalo, who is like the MVP. <laughs> like, I know. Uh, love him. <laughs> Definitely the Appa of the crew, for sure. Yes. <gasps> they meet with uh, Sudogo outside of the city, and Sogolon has Tracker open another one of the 10 and 9 doors to escape. Uh, chapter 16, traveling through the doors. Uh, okay, so I have to talk to my nerds about this one. Uh, Geek Bomb Book Club covered book one of the Wheel of Time series and there is this thing where they go through this door that takes them uh, on an oh it's almost like an underground but it's like a parallel universe-esque but warp where you go along a path so it's a physical path so you can't drop off from it but you travel faster through the lands. Ten and Nine Doors very reminiscent of that personally for me let me know if I'm wrong um but they, it takes them to the city, near the city of uh, Dolingo. Tracker must stay awake or the ASE can find him in his dreams. Did you guys also have this thing where it's like, why would the ASE, knowing that it has been an ensemble, a group mission. Uh, why is he going for Tracker? Mm. Just Tracker. Mm. Well, he is also, uh, so Sogolon says, you know, you were the, when she goes on a rant later, she's like, you were the most important part of this to find him and you still weren't very useful or helpful <laughs> um and she's pissed uh but i think there's the element of his nose which is such a huge like skill and why you know the they keep going after him and trying to get into his mind but i wonder if he i wouldn't want to be in his mind no no it does not seem fun um at all that's an understatement but i wonder if he's connected I don't know if that's what you're getting at, Mom, that he's more connected to the main sort of storyline. Cause we don't, we still don't really understand like everything that happened with his family and how they fit in. I don't know if it's like, you think he's part of the the line somehow or like a you No, know. I think in terms of information, if you were to exploit someone through their dreams, Tracker is so wall up and defensive as a person that if I was going to infiltrate someone, it would be someone who is vulnerable, which is why I think Venin is 100% possessed or taken over at this particular stage. Yeah, oh yeah. And not who she says she is. And I was right about Fumangeli, by the way. Fumang Fumeli. Mm -hmm. Fumang the yeah. yeah. Um, but I love the fact that we've got like a Freddy Krueger scenario going on as well, mm. because it's like you cannot escape. Like there is that sense of helplessness uh, you can't rest. And I noticed a lot of the time in the Dresden files, like shit happens when he's at his most exhausted point and all he wants is just a couple of hours sleep. And like you feel, I'm empathetic. Uh, Track and can smell the boy again. They're traveling to uh, Delingo just as they are, but in the, from the opposite direction, the party is attacked by ASC's magic as well as these giant snake-like witches. Now having back-to-back -back combat like this, was a lot of fun personally for me and again you realize that nothing really goes by um Sigolin because she is just being like wait a second you're fighting them back but they're not necessarily attacking you why and she is constantly looking for things to get at him and she feels like he's keeping things from her so he does because he resents her which exacerbates the situation she's also keeping so much information like, from him too just, they just don't trust add a couple much. of drinks. Maybe Bond. talk it out. Talk it out because your information combined will solve this entire thing. But your stubbornness is getting infuriating at this stage. And they hate. They just both of them. I feel like think they're doing the right thing, but also don't trust each other and worry that the other will betray them. And so it's sort of this 
cycle of, well, she's already going to betray us. So we should just steal the boy. And then she's like, well, we're here in the, you're uh, on the same, I guess I'll sell y'all off and just take the boy. And they're like, well, okay, let's get us an uprising going. I don't know. You know, they just, they feed off of each other. Sorry. Tracker realizes the boy sent keeps jumping around because he's also been traveling through the 10 and nine doors. That's interesting to learn. 17. We finally learn a whole lot about in this chapter this is a great one and if we wanted to sit here and work on it and we can do the rest in the after show fantastic they arrive at another mansion owned by a man who owes uh sogolon a favor tracker no, tracker oh. this man looks exactly like the man who housed them in congo but says nothing sogolon is working not for bunshi as tracker suspected but for the king's sister lissy solo the current king quash dara's ancestor quash murky changed the um ancient rites of succession by murdering his sister so that his son could be king instead of his nephew. Now, mm. this act has cursed the nation through the generations. Greed is a topic that we stumble across, across often. Greed, Lineage, power, but family. Greed is usually the driving force for villains, especially when it um, comes to power. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in comic books, my goodness, greed mm. is like, you can't have a little bit. You need to have it all. And it's it's this con- uh, conquest that starts taking to effect. And I'm seeing that a lot here. Um, Quash Dara what? murdered Lissa Solo's family and sent her to a monastery. He also continually tries to murder her there. Rach. Sorry, I was just going to say that this section, I know we've talked about Game of Thrones, but an amazing, amazing animated musical movie. This section reminded me of The Prince of Egypt. Yeah. There and sort of like, I, telling that kind of a story that's maybe um, uh, illustrated in a way, or the the um, the three brothers in Harry Potter, that yeah. story and how that's all done. Like I can imagine some sort oh. of like marionette or yeah. you know uh, shadow puppets or it's, something. Especially because painting, like something this, very. Well, they did that in uh, Black Panther, like when they used. Yes. Yeah. 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 Black yeah. Black Totally. Especially yeah. because this uh, the whole book is already uh, uh, Red Wolf Tracker telling somebody the story. So to to do to keep doing that and just keep cutting to new actual live action footage would be kind of like wait confusing. Where are we? But if this was like a a, a fairy tale told in another mm-hmm. way, like you're talking about, Rich, keep I think thinking about Guillermo awesome. del Toro for this or yeah. something stylistically that ha- yeah. it is a. Have you, by the way, side side question, did any of you guys see like the new trailer or thing for the movie Candyman? They do that for Candyman, the new Candyman. I've seen the new one, but I saw yeah, the old one. So starring Yaya, and, he, and, and they, they have this trailer that's all silent with no words, but it's just like little paper cutout dolls mm-hmm. that like are doing different stories of Candyman Ooh. with like shadow puppets. Creepy. It's very, very cool, very Paper cutout dolls was a huge premise of um, us as well. That's Yeah, yeah, it was. That's what's that. in right now, Maude. That's what's in. Anyway, Maude, thank you for promising to, when o- theaters open up, to go see Candyman with me. I can't wait. It's going to be so Rachel, much fun. Wait up, wait up, wait up. Um, Rachel, you'll be there too, but specifically I need to rope I, in Maude. We need to watch her. Can we bring Dan too? Because Dan... Yes. Dan... Dan? Dan is a calming energy. Dan, <laughs> Dan is a calming cat. I'm better at... Dan brought a jacket to hide behind... He's getting so mad. Behind for a screening of Itch. It. I love watching. I Wait, love most of my of it, 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 For Dan Casey. Dan, Dan Casey was scared. Of, is this for a screening of the movie It or Hitch? Because those are very different movies. It, Which one was Dan it, Casey? More? It, okay. Not Hitch. Okay. But he's, okay. It, I'm sorry, Dan. But he, he gets scared of, at horror movies. And I discovered this going to like uh, early screening for him for work. And now I'm, like it's one of my favorite things. Let's all go see Candyman I, together. Yeah, because I, when I was a kid, I would make my friends on sleepovers watch like What Lies Beneath and then watch them to see them. <laughs> I would only watch them watch it so I wouldn't have to watch it, but I will see their reactions and pieces. I would be like, Mom, look at it. <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't want to. Um, the boy they seek is Lissa Solo's son, the current king's nephew. Now making him the rightful king um, and a threat to Quash Dara. We find out that the boy is traveling with the Impandulu, the winged lightning creature, and the Sasabonsum, the blood drinker, the brother to the creature, Leopard and Tracker, slew earlier in the book. That 
creepy. Yeah. Now they're cool. traveling through the 10 and nine doors from the opposite end that Tracker and the company are. Now that also, you can just see the catalyst about to erupt really. Uh, you can only go one way through a door until all 19 have been traveled through to try and reverse a trip would mean death, not just any death. Well, like it comes birth- back later. That's birth- some great like foreshadowing of only go through these once. I love, uh. mm, yeah. Uh, Tracker has big time emotions when he hears their host sing about lost, uh, lost loves. Now their host has been silent apparently for a long time. He's been silent. He's, like a, min- he's a minstrel who took on a vow, minstrel-ish, I guess. Yeah. Took on a vow of silence to avoid being killed by the king's men who basically killed every sort of storyteller or musician who would tell these tales of his succession because he doesn't want anyone to know. Fantasy's version of censorship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's it plays into Mm -hmm. the idea of not knowing what to trust because the king is trying to erase any information that threatens his rule, which is 1984 esque in in this rule. But the I love and am so curious to know who that guy is and why he chose to sing this you know, right, it has to be the message because he dies, and Real then he, yeah, and that's why he's saying because a lot of people are jumping to their deaths anyway. Uh, yeah. Tracker then has a hut to Sudogo, where Sudogo asks him why he's still on the job, uh, and he just says it feels like the right thing to do. Like, this again, just re kind of like establishes that he's an amazing, good hearted person, all sad. I love him. Yeah, he's fantastic. But what I did notice is that Tracker is still withholding information from Sadogo. He's asking questions. He's like, I need to learn more. You need to tell me why we're doing this. And Tracker is withholding. Yeah. And I'm wondering if this is to protect Sadogo. I just don't think he, I think it's that, but I don't think he still trusts anyone and doesn't know I think Sadogo is vulnerable and he talks a lot. (laughs) That has been established. If you ask a question, he'll tell you nine answers, you know? Yeah. And maybe he'd accidentally trust the wrong, because he seems very trusting. So for a tracker, it's like, I tell you, who are you going to tell? Because you're just a little marshmallow of a sweetheart. What a softie. Um, Sadogo reveals to tracker that the girl, Venon, is actually acting differently. She's more mean and less in tune with Sogolon. Uh, yeah, guys, we've seen this before where evidence is stating that there is more at play here and that you've got to keep yes. an eye on this shit. Uh, Sadoga reveals that he's fought the Impandulu before, back when the creature was previously controlled by a witch. So Golon is shocked that the host is saying for Tracker as he took a vow of silence 30 years back. The host, meanwhile, jumps off his roof to his death. So Golon has a Tracker and Sadogo secretly bury the body, but they're attacked by birds as they do it. What is the symbolism here? Do you think? Uh, Chat. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, I had. I just had a thought, and it flew away. I just away keep thinking of Hitchcock's The Birds because that I know, whole sequence I was, was pretty that, damn scary. But, but I, I don't. I don't think that's what Marlon James is talking about. <laughs> yeah. What is it? That was like. No. That was. Oh, mine is not an answer to this question, but I do want to say <laughs> the um, the whole like uh, creature being. Uh, on a leash for a witch and now being sort of freed and of his own accord. Another movie I want everyone to watch, same animators as the Hobbit movie that we all watched together, The Last Unicorn. There's ah, the yes. creepy carrot, like that like circus and the, um, the harpy. This reminded me of that, of like this wild beast that has been sort of contained and used for someone's purposes maybe like the king maybe like little princeling and as soon as they're or joffrey as soon as their people can't control them it's like well now i'm just going to destroy everything it remind, it, yeah they created the monster to begin with exactly <laughs> yeah uh, they reach Delingo, a technical marvel of a city built in huge trees with hanging trolleys that travel between them. The queen of Delingo, Delingo receives the group and strips Mossy naked before sending the group away so she could talk to Sogolon alone. Mm. Mossy. Tracker, I know, that was... Um, I, I was so that, for him. You know, that it, it's not gender bias, you know, like discrimination and exploitation right. and... You know, he, they just come and look at him and then use him and buddy. You know, yeah, right? it's just disgusting. And yeah, mm-hmm. oh, I felt so bad for him. 
Uh, tracker is led to his room where he's provided with whatever he needs through secret, secret doors, content warning. The next morning, he meets up with Mossy, who was forced to have sex with the queen through the night in order to get her pregnant. So mm-hmm. there's something about his seed that is deemed important for some sort of bloodline and the fact that it's a queen. Like, Well, and they're described as, in Delingo, as these sort of like blue, black skin coloring. Yeah. It is a much lighter yeah. Eastern, and it's... it's The deepest that they've had and the lightest that we've, we've heard yes. about. It feels yeah. like... Um, yeah, it's it's just, and you learn that the Dolingo got, you know, hooked on inbreeding and and messed up all of their kids. So now they're just so apathetic and not even evil, just devoid of empathy. They're sort yeah. of the opposite. Yeah. It's and this scientific kind of thing that we're getting more and more into, where it's not about a phrenology and all of these really gross, like kind of. They're not. Yeah, they're not seeing anyone as a person. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tracker and Mossy fight. Mossy wins and then senses something is weird. They rip open the walls to find this slave child tied up, controlling all the secret amenities. Closet boy. A human price to the comfort of this city. Mm. Hmm. It's relevant to build up a world for very, very rich people on the backs yep. of everyone else. And I have a feeling we'll be talking about that in a lot of detail in the episode. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Our tracker and Mossy sense that they're about to get betrayed by Sogolon and the Queen. That is a new allyship that is immediately not okay. The fact that Sogolon we never really understood, but then them having secrets together and then establishing what the Queen is about. Like, she is not good news. That is now dangerous. Um, they go to Sadogo to tell him when they're knocked out by gas. Do we have time to quickly go through chapter 19? Do it. You can do it. Do it, Mod. Right. The tracker, uh, tracker is tortured for the location of the boy. So Golan reveals that due to generations of inbreeding, as Rachel mentioned, uh, Delingo enslaves outsiders to keep the gene pool from collapsing. Children are raised through adulthood in these weird magic science sacks. And I think this is really interesting that they combining magic and science now that they are yeah. um, you know not mutually exclusive that there is a lot of overlap Franken- frankenstein esque a little bit yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i see that but also devoid of like any goodness uh tracker accuses sogolon of telling uh, selling them out sorry which is 100 percent true sogolon again what i yeah He's then tortured by white scientists. And already in the chat, white scientists have been a topic of discussion. Are they painted white? Have they got lighter skin? Are they white, European white? To me, I felt like they're doing all these experiments, like sucked like life out of, like it was almost like they were. Marlon James did describe, Marlon James did describe like they had full lips. They had, he almost was describing African or black features of people while still being like, but their skin, and then throughout the book, like anything that is white represents evil. Yeah. Which I think is a very interesting, we're used to evil being represented by black, by the color black. Well, I'm Mr. Carissa, aging and this pressure to look like white people in a lot of different countries that don't look like that. And it feels like their desire to be perfect or on top of the world uh, is, is, making them sick and making them more yeah. evil and the evil looks like colonizers yeah so miss necromancer ages ago when it was brought up in the chat actually said that they weren't necessarily white but they were more like a grayish hue and yeah. had again akin to like the life sucking nature of it all yeah. mm-hmm. um and then also said did anyone think that the queen was kept alive by necromancy mm maybe wait you are so smart i know <laughs> like you are such a blessing <laughs> um yeah and then said i totally agree with rachel it's like they're cursed and the white science is leaching out their skin and their life blood mm-hmm. i yeah all righty yeah. i think i get that completely uh oh whose skins are pale due to their evil experiments so they've been also been experimenting on themselves i guess they attach a parasitic twin to tracker called a bad abiji who roots through Tracker's memories to find the boy in a two-page run-on sentence. <laughs> <laughs> two-page run-on sentence. And that's what I was talking about with the fact that that it is- It breaks up all of this like quick 
quick, immediate, long, like I love. It was, so, it was like a whirlpool. Yeah, that I was on your the entire like, time. Yeah. It was sucked down into. Um, Victor, I saw you gulp earlier and I almost, I was like, that was a, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, that, little bro. Nerdist book club, I'm a, feeling good. I feel like anything that you're inspired by or like that you kind of feel is happening in this book, um, you know, like, oh, that reminded me of this particular trope. Well, I kind of saw this in fantasy. This, uh, the parasite is technically like veritaserum when we're talking Harry Potter. But I love that Marlon James is like anything that could be innocent or it's like, a, you know, oh, that makes sense. Or it's just a potion. It's like, no, no, no. It's not going to be a potion. It's not going to be an injection. It's going to be the most vile, trite, disgusting version of all of these yeah. things. So you were just maimed experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Tracker passes out. He's awoken by a rest. We got it. Yeah, he's awoken yeah, by- Yeah, we could do the the sort of the big- moments here because ne- i feel like next week is a shorter reading week we can kind of like start we mind picking up from here yeah, yeah okay. let's do that next week because okay. we'll have more and we'll do fan casting yeah Stephen, can you please copy paste all of your amazing work for wherever mod stopped reading and just put it at the beginning of next week's script so we'll be sure to tackle it okay great <laughs> halfway through 19 yeah thank you thank you steven thanks steven uh and we'll talk about 1920 and we read 21 we no, no, 19 and 20. Yeah. yeah, we'll do half of 19 and 20 in the after show and then go over that. We'll do it previously on next week. Fan casting, bring it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna do we're gonna finish the book next week, guys. That is super exciting. How are you, how are you both feeling about it all? Good, I'm stoked. I'm having a really good time. I was very overwhelmed the first week and like didn't feel like I definitely. Tr- stress myself out trying to understand things but i think as i went and obviously talking to you guys um all of the research that we all have done but especially steven Trey steven uh and and the conversations we have with the community and the chat i think has really helped me figure Same. it out now i'm on board like this section as i was reading and i was like i think i get it and i'm into it and I'm ready. There is a cumulative effect big time when discussing this book, but your homework, super easy, guys. Just finish the book. And if you've missed previous episodes, you can check them out uh, on Nerdist and Geek and Sundry's YouTube page. Um, all the previous episodes of Nerdist Book Club can be found there, including June and The Hobbit, which are previous books. Uh, or if you're on Geek and Sundry's Twitch, it is available there as well. So make sure you like and subscribe. But of course, it is time right now to head over to the after show, which is held on Geek Bombs Discord. If you want to jump into that, it is the book club chat for the Q&A, where we have a conversational like, a lot like this but you get to participate and join in the conversation and talk things out with us. It is an exclusive tier perk uh, for those who have Discord access as Patreon perk. Just head over to Geek Bombs Patreon if you want to get involved with that. It's the lowest tier. We get you four times a week. I mean, a month. It's amazing. Uh, Until then, though, finish that book. We'll have our last session. We'll see you then. Goodbye. 5 p.m. next week. Bye. Bye.